Well, if you are interested in a career in the building trades, today's show is certainly for you. Hello, I'm Shannon Skinner, and welcome to Extraordinary A Women TV. My guest today is Martina Ernst. She is the president and CEO of Woe Built, uh, which is a company dedicated to helping women enter and succeed in the building trades. Later in the segment, before we take a break, I'll have my regular good to know minute when I ask my guests for their top success tip. You'll hear Martina's. Hello, Martina. Well, thank you for having me. Oh, it's so nice having you here today. And I was commenting earlier on the, your beautiful, beautiful jacket that oh, I thank want. thank you. <laughs> uh, I'll be seeking one after the show today. Um, let's talk about what is Woe Built. We are a design and build construction company. Uh, we normally do residential projects and um, light commercial. And um, so we started about five years ago with um, we actually had a social mission uh, which we based the company on, uh, which was um, helping women uh, succeed in the building trades. Uh, we now actually have made it uh, slightly further. Um, actually, we now say women in the construction um, industry. So uh, what we started out with was when we um, when we started the company, we, uh, my business partner, Lida, and I, we basically looked around and said, there's no real sort of possibility for women in the trades. Um, there's a huge opportunity for women to actually enter the trades, but um, uh, there's very, very few well, possibilities in many ways and, and um, very few help. So she wanted to mentor women in construction and uh, so what we said was well, let, let's um, get a construction company that um, helps women to um, sort of enter, sort of be a little bit like a um, stepping stone for their career. So we hire women on our sites right. um, for um, sort of um, as an entry level yeah. and for a period of time. And then we basically sort of help them uh, sort of grow a little bit. And hopefully over time they uh, feel confident enough to go to other builders who can give them apprenticeships. Got it. So how did you come up with the name Woe Built? Well, it was short for women build. Yeah. Um, at the time, we decided we didn't really want to be too obvious about it. Um, so we didn't really want to have a name which was um, that obvious in terms of saying, look, um, it's women, it's women build, it's women owned, because we thought there might be some hurdles which we um, would uh, sort of create. So we may uh, shorten it to war build. Got it. Now, you began um, really as an architect, or you studied architecture in, in the University of uh, London University. Yes. It's really sort of where your, your story began. Um, in many ways, yes. I wanted to, I started out wanting to be an architect. But um, somewhere along the lines, it sort of changed. Um, after the first uh, three years, I decided that I was really more into the technical bits and pieces. And um, so I decided to go into environmental design and engineering, uh, which had more to do with um, lighting, air conditioning, um, in many ways, the technical aspect of building. And so I did my MSc in that one. And uh, after that, I decided to become a lighting designer. Well, lighting is so important in a home, is it not? Well, it's important for buildings in general. Yeah. Um, in many ways, you can't really have a space without light. If you have, I mean, you can't see a space without light. So lighting is key. If you have bad lighting, um, you have a really, really awful space. Right. I love going into the design lighting stores. So, yeah, there's uh, two uh, ways of looking at lighting. One is actually you have the fixtures, mm -hmm. uh, which is the chandeliers, your pot lights, your spotlights, your all sorts of things. You actually sort of um, make it very obvious where your lighting comes from. Or the other way is when you um, conceal the lighting and you don't know where the lighting is coming from and you only see the effect. And that really is when lighting is at its best and you see the effect of it. Now, at some point, you were in Singapore. Yes, a few yeah. years back. Yeah, and so what was it that you were doing in Singapore? Uh, I was actually working for the Singapore government on mm -hmm. the um, new extension to their subway line. And um, I was part of the, um, 
Well, it was the client-driven um, sort of team which actually oversaw um, the designers and the um, uh, contractors. And I was um, part of the design team, which um, the in-house design team, which actually led a lot of ideas, uh, which we then imparted to the consultants who then actually had to uh, figure it out. And then so at some point you came to Canada? Um, actually, I was in Canada before, before that, okay. um, and then um, we actually went to Singapore. Yeah. So here you are. Um, well, let's talk about some of the initiatives that you're doing with, with Wobilt. Let's get an idea of... We, um, as, I said, as I said before, we actually started uh, Wobilt with a social mission in mind. Mm -hmm. And um, so in many ways, I believe we are probably uh, very similar to social entrepreneurs. Okay. However, um, we now have widened our sphere uh, from the women focus to uh, the environment and um, so we are actually green builders as well but our emphasis on green is actually in terms of design in terms of design of spaces so can you elaborate a little bit on that um, yes because we when we started when we start looking at um, a building or a house. We actually look at where it is in, in, in the environment of where it is located. So we are, we are using the external and internal spaces to make sure that we actually get most a lot of natural things in there. Natural ventilation, natural light, natural shading. So we are not really a green builder where we put a lot of technology into the building, um, which is uh, slightly sort of, um, uh, it's a slight shift from what people do nowadays uh, because we are putting in a lot of technology to actually make it energy efficient. Um, we actually use the natural spaces and the natural environment to actually not use energy if we can, if we can help it. Um, the other way is we are actually looking at having um, systems which produce energy so we can actually make it um, a system which is almost self-sustaining. Um, Off-grid living is difficult to achieve at the moment, but if you, if you put in the right sort of technology, for example, like solar, solar uh, panels or solar cells, um, thermal, uh, geothermal, or even uh, wind technology, if you use these ones to um, produce um, energy, to be able to offset um, the energy you're using. So a lot of this can then actually become a much more um, integrated system. So Martina, why do you think that there are not more women in, in the trades? Several um, issues. Um, in the building trades. In the building these, trades. Yeah. Um, it's becoming more prevalent, I have to say, and that is good. But um, there is still a lack of opportunity in many ways um, in terms of uh, what people perceive um, the trades to offer. So the trades are a huge, a huge um, opportunity for women. Um, nowadays, it's actually a lot of technique and a lot of um, technology actually is there to help with the physical aspect of the trades. The trades are very physical, I mean the building trades, I mean it's very hands-on. Um, Traditionally a male-dominated it, It's field. still very male-dominated. Yeah. But what, what is happening, because there's techniques and um, uh, new technology, it actually makes it easier for women to keep up with the physical demands of it. So that's, so the one hurdle is, is really gone for that. Now, um, what, are the, um, what are the challenges still for women to actually enter the trades? And in many ways, is, it is their own attitudes. Because if you look at it and if you really evaluate what the trades have to offer, um, it's enormous. And if uh, women really just look at it and see it, I think that um, a lot more women would actually consider going into the trades. Now, Martina, I think this is the perfect time to take a break, and that means I've got my good-to-know minute, so I know you've got a great success tip, so jump right in there. Right. My, uh, my success tip really is you have to have confidence in yourself. 
confidence to know that what you're doing is absolutely right and you have no doubt about it. Well, that's good to know. Confidence. Well, we're going to take a quick break and when we come back, more with Martina Ernst, uh, President and CEO of Wobilt. We'll be talking more about uh, designing, constructing homes from a woman's perspective. Stay where you are. Hello, welcome back to the show. I'm Shannon Skinner and I'm speaking with Martina Ernst. She is the President and CEO of Wobilt, a company dedicated to helping women succeed and thrive in the building trades uh, industry. Nice to see you. Thank you. Um, now, I'm really enjoying this conversation with you. And we, during the break, we were um, talking about a, a, a new initiative that you have just starting out the gate to do, to do with food. Yes, um, we, um, we actually looked around um, a few years back. I was um, starting to get quite appalled at um, the sort of quality of food which I could get at supermarkets. And um, so we actually thought, um, wouldn't, wouldn't it be really great if we could combine our building and our building, our green building initiatives with um, possibly food production? So we are having a really, really um, very, very new initiative. So it's um, still in the sort of in the, in the sort of starting gates. That's okay. We can keep. We can leave the viewers intrigued. That's right. So yeah. there will be a lot more um, uh, in a, in a couple of months' time, and um, we are going to sort of release. Um, what we are doing periodically over those next um, couple of months to sort of see what we can do. So Martina, what have um, been some of the greatest challenges for you as a woman in this, in this industry, in this business in particular? Um, I must say that I was actually really fortunate. Um, I had very few challenges, actually, me personally, in terms of um, my choice of career. I had enormous opportunities um, in which were either handed to me or fell into my lab or um, things which I pursued. Um, and so I think to, but the challenge Wobilt now faces is something um, in terms of perception. We actually have to fight to see uh, or to make sure that we are a big player in the market. Right. and um, to actually convince, uh, convince people that we are a big player or the big player that we are. Uh, mainly because um, we are not the typical sort of construction company. We don't fit uh, the profile in, in many ways. Um, we are women run, uh, we are women owned. Um, our, we are managing contractor, which means that we basically manage uh, the projects. We are like project managers, however, we actually have the added responsibility for um, sort of the projects, being a contractor. Um, our subtrades are exceedingly good, are mostly men, because we still haven't really figured out um, how we can um, sort of um, uh, sort of retain and find um, enough women to actually do our projects for us. Um, but um, so, it's a matter of perception in the public that uh, a company that is so different is um, as good or even better than cons other construction companies around. So what is the reaction of people uh, when you tell them, especially men, what's the reaction of men when you tell them what you do? Um, it's it's um, usually um, it's a little bit of surprise. Uh, most of the time it's actually really positive especially for men, because they say, oh yeah, it's, it's great that uh, women do that, and, and, and so. Sometimes um, I turn up and um, people actually look at me and say, well, you're the contractor? And I say, yeah, I'm, I'm the contractor. And uh, so they're surprised sometimes with it. Um, so, um, but most of the time, once we actually, once people figure out that we really know what we are talking about and that we actually do have the skills and um, in, in, in many ways that we are really fighting for them in, in their corner, um, they really forget, I think, in very soon that it's women run and women, women owned. So what are your, your future plans for life? 
not necessarily just with the business, but where would you like to go uh, as Martina Ernst? It's an interesting question. I mean, at the moment, I am a little bit in flux about this. Um, of course, I want um, the company to succeed. Um, but I think what really um, is at the heart of the company and because um, really at the heart of the two founders as well, um, my, my business partner, Lida, and I, is that we really, really want to make um, life better for people around us and with our initiatives. And I think what we're really, really trying to do is to have the vision uh, to find initiatives which are uh, helpful for the people around us and for the community. Well, that sounds inspiring to me. Well, I, it's, it's, we try what we can do mm -hmm. uh, with the um, little influence we might have, and, um, but um, hopefully it will be enough. Can you give me an example? Do you have a, a typical, typical clientele, like a typical t client type? Not really. No? Um, okay. We actually have um, we have clients um, from all from all um, walk of life. Really, mm. um, it's people. I believe our clientele is people who understand what we try to do, and um, uh, those are the people we are looking for, and um, those are the people who usually find us as well. Well, Martina, I have really enjoyed this uh, time with you. Is there anything um, left unsaid that you would like to, to say before we depart? Uh, no, thank you very much for having me, and it was a blast, I must say. No, it was really a lot of fun, too. I've learned a lot, so thank you so much. And of course, with the construction, if you can hear it in the back, it's just so suiting. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. But anyway, to have enjoyed this time and I wish you all the best um, with what you're doing and, and your future plans. Well, thank you so much. Well, for more information about Martina Ernst, you can visit my website at extraordinarywomentv.com under her episode page where you will see this video uh, as, as well as her bio and some uh, other information and uh, uh, more about uh, Will Build. And of course, for more information about upcoming shows or to contact me, you can visit the website at extraordinarywomentv.com. I'm on Twitter, Facebook. Uh, come follow me on Twitter. I'll, follow me and I'll follow you back. Uh, anyway, it's a great place to connect with me. Uh, if you are inter interested in transforming your life, I hope these stories have inspired you. You have been watching Extraordinary Women TV. I'm Shannon Skinner. See you soon.